Hello everybody. Hi Sarah. How are you? Hope you're doing well. It's a good day and it's a good day in my neighborhood. <laughs> Any day that's drama free, two thumbs up. <laughs> Absolutely. Hi Zandra. Hi Deborah. Come on in. If you'd like to um, make yourselves known, that would be excellent. We're just going to chat a minute. Sarah's having a, a decent day. <laughs> hey, Tam. Hi, Janet. I love the little icons. It's so fun to see all the little emoticons showing up in the, in the chat. I have two mice. I have two mouses. I have two of these. <laughs> they go to different computers, so I have to keep them straight. Otherwise, I'm trying to operate one computer with the wrong mouse. Hey, Dawn. Nice to see you. So great to see everybody coming in. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started because I think we have a lot to do today. <laughs> so, welcome to Drama Free Friday because that's what we do here. We don't do drama. And uh, why don't we do drama? Because <clears throat> there's enough of that outside the walls of this studio and outside the walls of my home. There's enough drama to take care of things at a later time. So right now, oh, sorry, itchy nose. Right now, we're going to let it live out there. And we're going to be in here. We're just going to play and have fun. Oh, let's see. People are coming in. Hi, Silver Mist. I'm sorry I don't know your name, but I've seen you in other um, streams, so it's great to have you here. And Denise. And let's see. Who else? Who else did I miss? Mindy. Hey, Mindy. And yeah, so is Pavla here? Did I miss you? Hi, Pavla. I missed you. Thanks for coming. She came all the way from the Czech Republic. Yeah. And who is Penny? Is Penny Silver Mist? Did I miss somebody? Penny. Okay, Silver Mist is Penny. I'll try to remember that. <laughs> There's no guarantee, but I'm going to try. <laughs> so anyway, it's great to have you guys here. Um, we are having cold weather. It's been really cold, really sunny, beautiful. I know you guys probably don't enjoy the weather report, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like my mother. My mother always gave me the weather report like I couldn't see. <laughs> I'd come up to her apartment when she lived with me. I'd come upstairs and she'd say, well, the sun isn't out. <laughs> I won't even tell you what I thought. The thought that went through my mind was, was uh, crazy, but anyway. Yeah, so anyway, we've got lots of sunshine out, but we've had snow for a couple of days. You know, a skiff of snow. Just enough to make the roads just miserable. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's just crazy. Anyway, but it has been bitterly cold. That's the worst part. That's the worst part. Anyhow, so we're going to start on um, something that I was requested by one of the viewers. Actually, I'm going to back up for a second. Deborah says it's been in the high 80s ah, in Southern California. <laughs> hey, CB. High 80s. That's just wrong. That is just wrong. It is just wrong. I'm telling you. So first of all, I wanted to, <laughs> wanted to say a couple of things. To blonde woman stamping Jean, thank you for the suggestion about throat coat because that's what we're trying today. I've been using it the last couple of days, so that is what is in my cup, is throat coat tea. So we're going to see if it makes a difference um, in my throat situation holding on. When I talk for long periods of time, I start, you know, you know what happens. And... Um, so I wanted to say thank you to uh, to her for making that suggestion. I appreciate I read all the comments, and I really appreciate what everybody has to share with me. And I was watching, uh, last night I was doing some work in here in the studio, and I uh, 
checked my subscriptions on YouTube and there was one by Shannon Green. And so I thought, oh, I'll, uh, I'll see what, you know, I often have things on, on my laptop playing in the background while I'm working. You know, it's like instead of the television, I have the stuff going on in the background on my laptop. So she had her first shout out video for 2016 where she talks about, you know, different channels that she's followed, that she enjoys, and she's encouraging other people to go check them out. So I was watching and listening and, you know, more listening than watching. And all of a sudden she said, and now we come to Barb Owen and I about gave myself whiplash. <laughs> I mean, I'm not even kidding. I about gave myself whiplash. And I was like, what? So anyway, I wanted to thank Shannon for that shout out. That was really nice. If you have not seen that video, uh, I mean, I think she put it up yesterday or last night. Like I said, the link to her channel is in the description box below the um, screen, the video screen. So in fact, I got my act together and I think I got all the links to everything I'm going to do today or at least 95% fingers crossed in the description box so if there's anything you want to check out your uh, that stuff is already in there you don't have to wait till later and then the other one that I wanted to point out or bring your guys attention to in case you missed it was the uh, our friend artist poet girl APG Jamie we call her and she doesn't do streaming but she does YouTube videos and this morning when I was getting my act together getting ready to you know <laughs> trying to get awake basically trying to wake up people it's just not easy sometimes to wake up and so I was trying to get my act together and she had a video that she had recorded put on YouTube about making one of the splatter tools and with using the broom the broom straw type they're plastic but you know they're the pieces of broom anyway it was really good and I really enjoyed that and so I may have to sacrifice some of my broom bits to make some splatter tools because then it looks pretty it looks pretty good i've seen paula journal artista use one i have she also referenced blade the artistic biker i think is his channel that he made one i haven't seen him but i've seen paula use hers a lot anyway it's pretty cool so hi jan and anyone who comes in that i don't um that i don't happen to acknowledge i'm so glad you're here thank you i try to catch everybody <laughs> i'm talking about you jamie i'm talking about you. and there she is in the chat uh, <laughs> uh yeah so and her the link to jamie's channel is also in the description box below the video so you can just click on that if you want to go over there and check out her videos she does some of the funniest videos i, I think that my two favorite uh, people that make me laugh when I watch YouTube are Shannon Green and APG Jamie. They both make me laugh literally out loud oftentimes because neither of them, the, the cool thing, and I'm trying to learn from both of them, neither of them take themselves very seriously. And that is just so critically important in today's crazy world that we live in. Don't take yourself so seriously. <laughs> so, hey, Meg, nice to see you. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, Jamie says I'm advancing on her list. I'm not quite sure what that means, but, you know. <laughs> Hi, Jillian. Okay, so um, I just wanted to to um, encourage you guys, if you don't, by some chance, don't follow either one of them, check them out, and the links are in the description box. So I had, last week, I had talked when I was rambling on and making my little uh, card thing, which I guess I should show you the progress. It's not finished, but it's got, uh, it's got some progress going on, so I'll show it to you here see how much stuff I've got in the way kind of moves things out of the way here okay so this is the little deck of cards that I kind of turned into <laughs> Jamie says oh I'm very serious 
just be happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I understand. I understand. So this is the little deck of cards that I was working on. And as you can see, this is the entire deck of cards. It makes a fat, fat little book when you use all the cards. And so I just thought I would show you where I am so far. I have all of the cards. There's the front cover. And so I got the inside of the front cover ready to put the little message in here, which says, it's going to say, I'm so grateful for, and then the various things, the various me messages come after that. Hey, Mr. Race, things are working fine for me. You'll have to check, ask the chat people. Ask the chatters. <laughs> So here are the little cards. They just work really nicely when you flip them and you add little messages. And I like the, how the colors turned out on the back. Hey, Jan. Hi, Bunny. And I just like how they turned out. So I have all of them ready now, fronts and backs, and they're all ready to have their little messages put on them. Now, I don't know if I'll keep this all in one or if I will turn, you know, split it up and put it into a couple of little books or um, exactly what I'm going to do. But anyway, I just wanted you to see how it turned out. And then I'll take another piece of paper and I will um, put it on the back of this so it has a finish on the back. But I really like using that. Um, yeah, what's the name of it? Microglaze, that which is now is also packaged under the label Distress Glaze, and I really like that on top of the backs of the cards because it doesn't have any stickiness to the the other page, you know, the page in front of it. So, hey Victor, nice to see you. Okay, so the other thing that I had a comment about or a question about were the pieces that I talked about when I was working on this little deck last week. Because when my, truthfully, when I'm doing something that's really repetitive, uh, I can just rattle on and sometimes I say things that I probably shouldn't say. <laughs> that might have happened last week, but I don't think so. But anyway, I had a question about these pieces that I did. This was during the infamous quilt retreat <laughs> that I went to where I was not very well received because of what I was doing. Anyway, somebody wanted to see the pieces, so I thought, I'll show them to you. So these were, if you want to know more information about how these came to be, you can watch the recording from last week. And there will always be something in the recording title that says live or replay or rebroadcast or something. That way you know that that's what you're, what you're watching is from last time. Anyway, so this, this was an exploration of the chakras and chakra colors and what things were specifically important or jumped out at me. So this is the red one. <laughs> Victor, you got lots of emoticons going on there. <laughs> I poofed? I don't think so. I think I'm here. It shows that everything's good with me. Um Anyway, just check in the check in the chat for a second. How's Miss uh, did Carrie come in? Hi Carrie. Good to see you out oh, with a, an octopus, I see. <laughs> okay, so anyway, let's go back to this. So this was the red piece that I did. These measure about 8 by 10 or 8 and a half by 11, something like that. And so these are all different pieces of red stuff. So I went through my stash before I went to the retreat, and I gathered up all the red stuff I had. So there's red trims, there's red fabric. There's the cruddiest fabric in the world in here. This shiny red stuff is just awful. I don't know if you can see it sparkling in the light. That is horrible to stitch. Horrible. Awful. And, you know, so it just, uh, 
it's all different pieces and let me show you on the other camera because maybe you can see it better I am. Well, reload the try yeah. re reload the page. Okay. Okay, you guys doing okay? Just to check with everybody. Just checking to see. Clausman came up and told me that he had a black screen, so I'm just checking to see. Okay, Tam. Thank you, Tam. I appreciate you helping me out there. I think maybe something just glitched. Some things glitch, you know. Hi, Kelly. So anyway, um, thanks. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate that. So here is, maybe this can show you a little bit more of the texture. So I just pieced all this stuff together, you know, and then it's covered with a layer of tulle black tool which you can't see I'm sure and then I did a bunch of stitching over the top of it and then I added some trims on top of that there's just you know stuff every way hi not that Martha <laughs> and then I did some you know some stuff on top so there's a red flower and then these are words that I printed off on fabric that I ran through the computer Okay, so there's the red one. And here is the orange one. So this this one. <laughs> Oops. Oops. I just dropped something on the floor. Sorry. Okay, hang on just a second. I uh, I dropped something on the floor and I gotta put a towel on it. I'll be right back. Just a minor accident. I caught my, I even used a travel mug today with a lid on it. <laughs> Hot Sun, if he's in the audience, is saying, I told you so. I told you so. Yep, he is. He's saying, I told you so. All right, I just have to clean up my tea that I spilled. <clears throat> okay. It wasn't on my desk. It wasn't. It was um it was someplace else. <laughs> so it hit the floor. It didn't hit any computer equipment. It hit the floor. But it had a lid on it. So all is well. Okay, here we go. Back to where we were. Okay, so this one, this one uh gave the quilt the quilt lady this one gave her a headache. <laughs> the orange one okay um made her stomach hurt <laughs> so so we're just gonna we're just gonna soldier on we're just gonna soldier on so here is the orange one so if this upsets anyone or makes anyone sick or leaves you feeling queasy i apologize <laughs> i apologize <laughs> So anyway, so this is the orange one. They're all done the same way. So I went through and I just picked out all the orange things that I had in my stash, put them on. Then I added um, embellishments with these are cordings. There is machine stitching on here. There are there's surface stuff. I'm just tipping it so you can see. There's surface surface stuff of beads and buttons. Um. <laughs> she was a crazy quilt lady that's for sure and so the words these are words that jumped out at me when I was you know exploring about the um, the chakra energies and so forth and everything each one is different each one is unique and each one has a little flower that was particularly um, significant for me Okay, so there's that. And on the back, it's just a, a quilt fabric. And what else? And I've used fishing line. 
I don't know if you can see that. There's a fishing line that I've used, and that's what I use to hang them by on my cabinet doors. Uh, and then I have little crystals. This is a hot fix crystal that is in there. So there's that one. So there's the orange one. Okay, so moving up, here is the yellow one. So this is for, and I can't remember, I'm sorry, who it was that asked me to see these pieces. So, yeah, <laughs> it's okay, Sarah. <laughs> oh, we have Sarah in uh, Scotland. Hey, good to see you. And we have another Sharon. Sharon um, Ludlow. We we have today, <laughs> today, we have a plethora of Sharon's and Shara, Sarah's, I think. <laughs> Okay. All right. So let's go back. Let's go back to this one. Okay. So here's the yellow one. And, you know, the process is exactly the same for all of them. But this one, I added beads or chain. Let's see if you can see. The surface has chain added on. And so that's done after everything was finished. And that's added on top of everything. This is a porcelain button. And again, the, um, the words were things that jumped out at me, you know, when I was studying the chakra energies. I love this. I'm not sure you can see it, but that's a tea tiny little clock. Tiny, tiny, tiny little clock. Um, yeah, these are wall hangings. Yeah. Yeah, these are wall hangings. So there's the yellow one. All right, so then this is the infamous green one. This is about where the group, this was a very traditional group of traditional quilters. <laughs> this is where the lady came over to me and she says, oh, now you're making a green one. This was a different participant in the, in the group, <laughs> which I just cracked up. It's like, I yeah, sure enough am. I'm just making a green one now. Yep, now I'm just making a green one so funny anyway okay hey Jean anybody that I miss please um, accept my apology for missing missing you greeting you I'm trying to catch everybody when they when they come in it's just it's not Sarah wants to know what the big deal was it's just that they weren't traditional yeah they just weren't traditional pieces of quilting and it was a very traditional group, so I was kind of rocking their, I was rocking their space a little bit. So this one again has a little crystal in the O, um, and various beads. So some of them are, some of them have things that really, you know, stick up off the surface. The leaves up here are applied on the top. Hi Ella. So anyway, here's the infamous green one. This is the one that I was telling you last week where she came over and said, well, now you're doing a green one. It's like, oh my, I just can't even tell you some of the things I wanted to say that were they, sometimes things roll through my head that should never roll through my head. <laughs> just telling you, should not go through my head. And fortunately, most of the time, I still have the capacity to edit myself. <laughs> Oh, shoot. Anyway, so this is the blue one. Um, so this is working up the energy systems, energy centers. So this is the blue one. Um, yeah, has a little, a little purpley kind of color thrown in. This is just an odd blue button I had. You know, so I used a lot of one-of-a-kind things on these pieces, you know, and added beads and various things. So this is the blue one. The next one is indigo. So Shannon, Shannon, if you're watching, this is indigo. <laughs> That's blue, and there's indigo. I had to laugh. There was one day she was, she was talking about the Roy G. Biv and um, on one of her videos. 
So anyway, so there is the indigo one. It's a very deep purpley kind of blue. So there is indigo. This one I used yarn that had texture. So, you know, as I as I worked up the chakras, because I started with red and I kept going, as I kept developing them, I added more texture on a lot of them. These are really big beads that I added and so forth. So anyway, there's the indigo one. And here is the violet one. So here is the violet one and this one has a lot of texture. This was a button that I don't know where else I would ever use it. Maybe on the, a journal cover because it's so thick. But this is the violet one. And uh, often gold is associated with that same energy center so there's a lot of gold that I used within that center or within this piece as well. So anyway, there you go. So for whomever it was that asked me about seeing those, um, there you go. So if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, we're going to keep moving on. We talked about that. And something else I did this week, I did a couple of things I was just going to show you. I did <clears throat> a class for the membership at howtogetcreative.com um, that's going to come out, I think it's next week, and it's um, all different ways to gather fabric. I don't do everything with fabric, but this season I did quite a few things with fabric. And I'm looking for the right side of this. And so I thought in, in conjunction with that, I would just play with some of the ruffles that I um, gathered fabric that I created and here is some of those here are a couple pieces of those gathered fabrics so I show in the class lots of different ways to gather fabric and so here are a couple of them this was fabric actually that came from this was leftover stuff from the back of the quilt for that I did for my granddaughter and I also talked about that last week so this was leftover fabric from her quilt and then I decided to play with it and see what it would do. And so I used Adirondack Color Wash. And I know that we used to use these quite a bit in the mixed media stuff. Oh, thanks. Sally Ann. I love your name, Snickerbocker. <laughs> That's a great name. <clears throat> thanks, Victor. Um... Aubergine. Oh, Ray says it was even aubergine. <laughs> no, it's violet. <laughs> anyway, uh, so these are color wash sprays from Adirondack. Tim Holtz uh, has his name on these. And we've used these a lot in the past in art journaling and things like that. These are somewhat similar to the dilution sprays in that they are uh, on paper they're always going to reactivate with water. These are never permanent. These are never permanent on paper. And because if you get them wet, they're going to reactivate. They're very intensely colored. These are earth colors by comparison to the dilutions, which are very, very bright, brilliant pigments. So this one is red pepper, and I, that's what I sprayed the fabric with. So unlike paper, when you spray them on fabric and heat set them, they are supposed to be permanent and my experience so far has been that they are and then this one up here at the top is cranberry so I just thought I would show you how those dyed up they are um, they actually are a patterned fabric so there was some color in them to begin with but I just thought I would show you how that how that um, took the took the dye if you do something like this with fabric you want to make sure that you coat cover your hands with gloves. It is not enough to cover your hands with the invisible gloves because <laughs> these are really intense, these colors. So anytime you're going to dye fabric, you want to coat, uh, protect your skin with gloves. So anyway, a lot of, 
lot of fun gathered fabric. Um, this I also finished so that you could see that. This is the journal a couple of weeks ago. I think it was. Um, Kyla Give Hand was here. We had a special guest with Kyla. And so I thought I would show you that I did indeed finish the cover of the book. And so it is, uh, I did some stitching. I just looked at that and went, oh, that stitching looks terrible. That's all right. My tension got a little wonky right in one spot, which can happen when you're dealing with painted fabric because sometimes the paint and the needle and the stitching and the tension just don't get along very well. Oh, sorry, I was just reading the chat for a minute. Okay. Hey, Di. Nice to see you. So this is the ribbon that I did, the belly band, and this was a couple of pieces. This was jelly plate printed fabric. Okay, so that's what this is. And this is leftover jelly plate printed fabric. And I took leftover leftovers, and I put them on the contrasting color of the strip and then just machine ugh, can't even talk straight today machine stitch them on to make an interesting little belly band so anyway I may have to adjust the size of it as my journal gets full of entries depending on how fat it gives, gets I may have to even add you know some additional length to my little belly band but anyway it's not the most convenient closure but it's cute people it's cute and that's what matters <laughs> that's what matters hey Jess um, Sarah says maybe one day you can give us tips on using a color wheel sure you can do that I will put that in my list of things I have some some samples for that even okay so that is the journal that I did with Kyla from uh, the Journey Within, it's from the class The Journey Within, that was one of the journals, this was the January journal. Okay, this is, uh, I'm part of a class that I do called Book Club at Soul Sentiments, which is a store that's local to me, and uh, this is the next book that we're doing and so I thought I would show you I had not seen this book before you'll find a link in the description box under the video if you want to check it out <clears throat> but this is storytelling with collage and I thought that a lot of you who like to do collage might be interested in in seeing it uh, it's a Northlight Books publication and it's got some really interesting pieces in it. it. It starts out, chapter one is collage with textured paper, two is collage with fabrics, three is collage with stitching, four is collage with found objects, five is collage with photos and images, six is collage with nature, seven is collage with color, eight is collage with wax, that ought to be interesting, and nine is collage with metal. So it has a lot of eye candy. No, Jess. No, no. She's going to wait yet another day. <laughs> she will wait another day. <laughs> Hi, Josie. Hi, Sherry. Okay, so just letting you have a little look-see through the book so you can kind of get some of the ideas. A lot of eye candy. A lot of fun things to do. And so it's going to be interesting to see where this goes. If I have time to work through the exercises, I will definitely share with you. Um, Donna Watson, I follow her blog, donnawatsonart.blogspot.com. I follow her blog. She has some really interesting blog entries. So anyway, we'll just leaf through this just so you can kind of get the idea of some of the pretty, pretty pieces of eye candy. Hi, Abby. 
That's a lot of emoticons you got going on there, Abby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so we'll just give this a quick look through just so you can see some of them. But a lot of the texture, I don't know that the picture coming through the computer screen will do this justice, but it's got some beautiful textured pieces. Jess, she is not hot. She is not hot. Do not encourage Claus Man. Do not encourage Claus Man, or he'll be up here carving another one. Now look at this with all the assemblage kind of details. Now, well, of course, that's Seth Apter. Of course it is. Seth Apter has a lot of that. Hi, Eileen. Nice to see everybody coming in. Okay, so anyway, there you go. So for any of you that are interested in collage, storytelling with collage by Roxanne Evans Stout. Techniques for layering color and texture. So you can find that. As I said, you can find the, a link to it if you want to check it out in the description box below the video. All right, so what we're doing today, you guys probably want to know what we're doing today. Jean will probably run for the hills. If she's still here, she'll be leaving right away. <laughs> and if Eileen happens to be in the chat, she'll be leaving as well. I know that. But that's okay, because not everybody has to like everything, right? Not everybody has to like every single thing. So this is what we're doing today. And... I, and so this is a jelly plate printed by Jean. This is a jelly plate printed card. And this little Valentine is actually, I don't know if you can tell, but it's actually a pin. So it actually will come off. Let's see if I can take it off for you. Give me a give me a second. Let's see if I can avoid ripping the ripping the card. Of course, I fixed it so that, you know, for the display today. <clears throat> All right, so there's the card, and it has two holes punched in it right here. And then this pin comes off, and so it's a little pin that, that you can wear on your coat or blazer or whatever. So let me show it to you up close so you can see a little bit more. So there's the pin. Okay, so here's the pin. It's all done by hand. Done with a die cutting machine, which I'm going to show you here in a little bit. But there is the pin. It's three different layers of little hearts. And this little charm on here says trust, which I thought was pretty good for the heart. So here is the, the card background. So this is where it lived. And here's another one, another one of the jelly prints and these are very simple simple jelly prints so we're gonna I'm gonna show you how I did it and I'm gonna show you the little heart okay alrighty so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually do the jelly plate so that those items can be drying so we'll do a couple of those so the plate that I'm using is and pardon the fact that you have to watch my monitor in the background but there isn't much of a way for me to maybe I can tip it a little bit so you don't have to see it as much where well, I can still see it but you don't have to see it okay we'll do that okay so I'm using the 8 by 10 jelly plate so in case you have not seen a jelly plate they come it is a, a permanent printing plate. You can also make them out of gelatin. And I use a piece of acrylic or plexiglass and I let it live on that because it will stick to it and then it's easy for me to um, it doesn't move around. If I leave it, you can leave it on the plastic and you can have it um, you know, you can have it just on the plastic sheet 
It's so remove one plastic sheet, but leave it on the other one. You don't want to put it directly on your surface. You want it on something, but I find it moves around on me, so that irritates me. Thanks, Ella. Um, okay, so here's what I did. I have some cards that I just got at Michael's. They're note cards. They come in a package, so the recollections. Sorry, I'm showing the wrong camera. They're the Recollections brand of cards, and they come with cards and envelopes. So I'm going to just pull out a couple of those, because that's all we're going to work on is two. And then I'm going to fold these. Just fold them. They're, they're scored, but sometimes the score is a little wonky, so I'm going to just just give them a good fold just to make sure that they're folded well. So any of you that are new to me, if you want to get my attention, that would be great if you'd write, uh, type in in caps. That way I, it draws my attention because the chat gets to moving and I kind of, kind of miss the, um, miss every, you know, some of the chatting going on. And if you have any questions, that's a good way to get my attention also. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with just a couple of colors of um, pinks. So this happens to be Basics Portrait, Light Portrait Pink. And this is Daler Rowney Hot Pink, but it doesn't matter. It's whatever you want to use. So I'm not going to use very much paint, just a little bit. And I'm going to use a brayer. So this is just a speedball brayer. And I'm just going to brayer it on. And I don't use a real thick coat of paint. It's, um, pull the camera in here just a little bit closer so you can see a little bit more here. So this is not a real thick coat of paint. And then to clean off the brayer, I just have a sheet of, um, it's just newsprint. And I'm going to use that to clean off my brayer here. You can develop some really beautiful papers with just brayering off, cleaning off your brayer. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in just a little bit of texture into the plate. So I'm using, this is a catalyst tool, has a design in it. So I'm just going to lightly put some texture in it and let me switch to a different camera so you can see a little bit maybe a little bit more a little bit more better as our artist poet girl says okay and then um what i'm going to do is use my cards and i'm just going to put the design on the uh, one side so I'm just putting it on here and just rubbing. Hi, Kathy. So I'm just putting it on and just rubbing around on the one side. You, know, you could do the whole thing, but this way I can get two cards out. And so there is the first layer of paint. And it had a a glop of paint on there so I'm going to pull it pick that off and let that sit there off to the side and then I'm going to there's enough room over here that I can do it again now you can make gelatin printing plates using gelatin and water you can make them using alcohol and some other things too the the one with water is not permanent but the one with alcohol I understand is I have not personally done that and so I can't attest to 
how how that works because I haven't done it. Okay, so we have two two cards, and then I'm just going to take the rest of it off on a gel piece of deli wrap. So just a wrap. You could pull it off on cardstock. You pull it off on all kinds of things, but I'm just going to use a piece of deli wrap. So just pull up most of that paint. And if some of it stays, you know, it's not a big, big deal. Okay, so we've got that going. And I'll just lay the deli wrap off to the side so I can use that. All right, now. Before I do the next layer of um, paint, I'm just going to give this a little shot of heat. It's I, I used a really thin coat of paint, and so it doesn't take long for these to dry because it's really thin. Nevertheless, I'm going to give them a little bit of heat. Dawn says she's made a gelatin plate using glycerin um, a la the Frugal Crafter. Yeah. Okay. So the next, I'm going to do the next color combination. I'm just going to use an orange. And this is also basics paint. It's just the color cadmium orange hue and a little bit of white. Use a little bit of white, not much, because I don't want to tint the color too much. Turn it into too much of a tint. And then I'm going to brayer that on. Again, a thin coat of paint. And this time I'm just going to use a piece of needlepoint plastic, plastic canvas, and I'm just going to texture it a little bit and brayer that off on the paper just so I get rid of most of the paint. And then I'm going to use some bubble wrap. This is just for the sake of adding some texture. So some bubble wrap here and there and brayer that off on the paper as well. And then I'm going to take the cards, same cards, I'm going to put them down here and I'm going to pick up this paint right on top of it. Okay, so I've added some orange to it now. So here's the one with just the pink and here's the one that has the orange on it. So it's developing a little bit more of the color. And so we're going to pick up a little bit more here. So there is a little bit more depth in the, in the color. Okay, so I'm going to come right over the top of this. I'm not even going to clean it off. I'm just going to come right over the top of it. And I'm going to use a little bit of red. This is primary red. And we'll add that to the mix. Anytime I brayer off with my brayer to clean the paint off, turn it upside down so the handle is sitting down. Otherwise, it can stick stick down to your plate which is or to your paper which is kind of crappy to tell you the truth okay I'm going to add some more texture again 
just draw some squiggly lines. And then I have this stencil called Mix and Match Hearts, and I'm gonna throw that down on there and then see if I can pick up a little bit of heart stuff through the stencil, or through the, yeah, through the stencil. And I'm, you know, you pick up paint off the plate and if that bothers you, then don't do this technique. <laughs> Now, I'm not expecting this to be a perfect heart to come up on this, but I'm just after, again, some color and a suggestion of some... Oh, it did come out quite well, as a matter of fact. Well, who knew? Who knew that that would do that, huh? <clears throat> hey, Ashley. So I'm going to do it up here as well. Let me go this way. See if I can pick it up where it's not perfect. Sometimes with the thicker cardstock like this, card like these cards are made out of, sometimes you you find it I find it challenging to pull up the color through them. So a little another a little another layer of color. Alright, so we'll take this piece of deli wrap and we'll pull up whatever's left through the stencil. Okay, so we've got some some stuff going on here adding to this piece of deli wrap. Now I'm going to just yank up the stencil and I'm going to put this on my my um, sheet where I'm brayering off and then just run over the stencil with the brayer to see if I can pull off any more of that paint that might be on the stencil. My experience is that I don't get usually very much coming off and that held true on this. There's not very much of that red heart pattern that came off. However, it does help get the excess off of your stencil. So That's that. Okay, okay, okay. So from there, um, I'm going to see if any of this wants to pull up on this deli wrap. I'll tell you what, jelly plates are really fun to play with, that is for sure. Okay, so I got more, a little bit more of the excess paint to come up. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this Quinacridone Magenta. So I'm going to use that. And I'm going to use gold. So this is just the regular gold in the Liquitex. Eileen, do you do videos every day? Eileen McKinnis has a really nice YouTube channel also. Great ideas, techniques, suggestions. Yeah, love the texture too. Okay, so we've got metallic gold. I don't want to completely obliterate the gold, so I'm going to leave a lot of that gold. Clean off my brayer again. The brayer paper is beautiful. And if you keep turning it, you know, and brayering different directions, you can really get some nice effects there. Okay, these are some little hand masks that I have. These aren't, aren't available anymore. Bye, Penny. Thanks for joining us. Uh, these are not available that I'm aware of, but... You know, you can always cut them out of plastic yourself. So I'm just going to add these little hand masks. They came in the set when I originally found them. They came in a set that had like um, three different sizes of hands. Or if you have a silhouette or something like that, I'm sure that you could cut them yourself. Okay, so we're going to see if we can pull a print up 
Oh, and I'm going to add some, some, actually before I do that, well, that's all right. I'm going to add some texture. This is another catalyst tool. It had a big long brush handle on it. And I took that off because it gets in my way. So I'm just texturing my paint, which if I was thinking about it and not trying to talk and do all this at the same time, I would have textured it first and then I would have put the hands down, but you know. Bye Penny, nice to see you. Okay, so yeah, Victor says, I love how Victor says that Eileen is a huge container with ideas. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> um, and she said she does videos Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and every other Sunday. My goodness, girl, that is a lot. Okay, so I'm going to put the card down here and we'll see what we get. It's going to see what we get. Okay, so the hands masked out. You can see the hands masking here a little bit and a little bit up there. Not as, as unique as the ones I did yesterday or last night because that middle layer with the red was a little bit more intense. So, you know, you get different effects depending on what you do. The hands would have shown more if I'd done another lighter layer in between, but I didn't, so we're going to go for it. All right. Um, I'm going to just catch it in here. Part of jelly plate printing is just the fun of the unpredictability of it all. And sometimes you get things you like and sometimes you get things you don't. So if you get something you don't like, okay, this one is a little bit better as far as being able to say the hands. If you get something you don't like, then you just do another layer of paint or you stencil over the top of it or you just keep going with it until you get what you do like. But we're going to say we like it because we're moving on. All right, then I'm going to pull all the little hands off, put them on my scrap paper and brayer them off just to see if I get any... Um, any more paint from them on scrap paper. But one of the secrets to jelly plate printing, in my opinion, is contrast of color. And so if you get colors that are too close together, like the red and the, the quinacridone magenta, were a little close in color in, um, and so that tended to obscure the pattern a little bit. You got to make sure if you sprayer off on paper like I did with these hands, this is still going to have some paint on it, so I need to turn it over so it doesn't completely stick down. Okay, uh, so there is that. And now what I'm going to do is, actually I think I may want to do a light color on top of these just so we can get a little more contrast. So let me shoot this with a little bit of heat. So Eileen says on Wednesday she does, that's when she does her vlog. I know she puts up lots of videos. That I know. And so interesting. Okay. So we're going to call that good. It's pretty dry. Okay. Let's add... Um, <laughs> I'm going to add, for something different, I'm going to add some white... And I'm going to go back and add a little more gold. We're going to see if we can get a little more contrast in this. If not, we're just going to go with it as it is. So some white and some gold. 
and maybe add back a little bit of the hot pink, the neon pink. So anybody that doesn't like pink is not going to like this, but I happen to like pink. So there you go. If you have paint crumbs that get stuck in the plate, um, I personally pull them out because I don't want them to mess with the texture of the plate. It's a personal problem. Okay, I'm going to go back to this brush thing and I'm going to just texture the paint. And I'm going to put the hands back on again and let's see what we get this time. Lynn. So let's put another little set of hands up here. I do love these little hands, I have to say. I use them a lot. Okay, let's see what we get this time. Let's go here. So get the hands a little bit more and some other hands. So it's kind of interesting. Hi Liana. Is it Liana? Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. Nice to have you join us from New Zealand. That's great. Okay, so let's just put it down. Sometimes you just gotta put it down. good enough. Moving on. Good enough and moving on. Let's leave this here and um, see if we can pull up something on a deli paper. I keep a stack of deli papers that I work over beside me and so I just constantly use those to, to do different, you know, Pick up paint, slap paint on, stamp on, etc. Okay, so I picked up the paint surrounding the masks, and now I'm going to pull off the masks and see. I'm not going to pull this up. I'm going to let this one sit. In fact, I'm going to dry it a little bit. And I'm going to use my heat gun with the jelly plate. However, I'm going to have it way up above the jelly plate to dry it. You do not want to put your, jelly, your heat gun way down on it, close to it, because that is not a good thing to do. But if you have it way up where you're just waving the heat over it, you're not going to cause it a problem. So what I want to do is I want to get this pretty dry which it's pretty dry. And then I'm going to put some paint on the top of it to pull this, to pull up all this stuff on the back of the card. So I'm just going to put some gold and maybe a little more white and just brayer that on. You want enough paint when you're doing this, this layer, 
that it's going to activate all that stuff underneath that we just dried. I want to activate that if possible. And sometimes I get what I'm after and sometimes I don't. And you know what? I don't really worry about that. I find that printing with a jelly plate is just um, a fun thing to do and I enjoy it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the back side of these little cards and I'm going to put it down here. And I'm going to see if I can print the back side of the card. At the same time, I'm going to try to pull up a lot of that paint that was left down there. And so there's the back side of the card. So I like that. That's okay. And then I'm going to see what I can get over here. And I'll show you these up close a little bit better here in a minute. Hi, Candida. From Brazil. Hey, that's great. Okay, so here is the other, the other one. And then there's some edges around here that don't have paint on them. So I'm going to see if I can pick up just like the edges. So I picked up the edge down here. And same thing on this one. This edge down here could use a little more paint. So let's just see if we can get just the edge. Good enough. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to see what I can get off the plate. So again, building stuff on the deli sheets. And at that point, I'm going to call it call what I'm doing done, and so I'm going to clean up the plate because I personally don't like to leave all the gunk on it. It's just my own personal thing. So I have water. Some people, there's a lot of people that don't mind leaving the the um, paint on the plate and pull it up later. I personally would rather start with a clean plate. I belong to the clean plate club. So I just use water and then keep changing the paper towel around and get up as much of the paint as I can. And sometimes I use baby wipes. But for me, when I get too much of the stuff, especially around the edges, then it starts affecting the outcome that I want, you know, for subsequent pulls. So that, you know, we all have our preferences as when it comes to cleaning or not cleaning the plate. <laughs> Sarah says a crusty jelly plate stresses me out. <laughs> It just, it's not that it stresses me out. I just don't like I just don't like having that to to start with. So I just keep using the water and cleaning it. And eventually I get all that stuff off of there. So that's me. You do not have to do that if that is not what you're after or what you like. So any of you guys that um, jelly plate, do you clean your plate or not? Because I think so far I've seen it's about half and half of the people that I've been watching like do videos and live streaming and so forth. Okay, I've got most of it off. 
And so I'm going to finish up using some baby wipes to clean the rest of it off. Deborah Pay says clean. Xandra cleans hers. Well, I could have predicted that, Xandra. <laughs> this jelly plate is not homemade. This is from the Jelly Arts Gel Printing Plate. It's from the company Jelly Arts. There's also another one that is made that Joggles has, and theirs is called a gel press gel press printing plate. I don't have any idea if they're made by the same company, just rebranded with different brands. I have no idea. And then there are some thinner ones made by some other companies. I have not, the ones, the only ones I personally have worked with are the ones from the Jelly Arts company. You can make gel printing plates. Um, you can make them with gelatin. You can make them temporary style where they're made with water and then you can make other ones that last more. I don't know if Dawn is still if still Dawn's Craft Riot is still in the audience. She said that she made hers with glycerin using the recipe that the frugal crafter Lindsay Wyrick showed in um, so she has said it's worked great. But I haven't done that, so I can't attest to that personally. Okay, so I pretty much got everything. The crusty, the crusty crud is pretty much off of it here. If I was doing this not on camera, I would take even a little bit more time to do it. But, you know, it's we're moving on. So what I do is I put the, um, it comes with two acetate sheets, and so I try to get one on it, and then I peel it up off of my um, plexiglass, and then put the other one on it. And sometimes I have to adjust them a few times to get the plastic the acetate sheets back on them fairly evenly but I like to put them back in the clamshell that they come with and then I do have a place in my studio where I let them where my jelly plates live and it's a place where nothing else gets set on top of them because they will mark uh, one of our friends online friends did that and she didn't realize that it was I'm gonna adjust this one more time. She didn't realize that she had her jelly plate in the way and she set a cup of hot soup on top of it and so it um, it marked her plate with from the heat. So Candida said she made one that is lasting for a year now. Well, that's great. Okay, and so I just put it back in the clamshell and then it lives in its own little place where nothing can get set on top of it. But for now, for now it's going to live on the floor. Alright, so let me get all the rest of this stuff moved out of the way. Because we're done with paint, we're done with gel printing plates. But see how pretty the, um, the paper gets where you brayer off? I mean, I love having these papers. It's much more intense in real life. Uh, and I love having these to use for journal covers and a lot of different things as well. So I really love them. I've done a lot of things like that. Okay. So we're going to bring up the um, die cutting machine, which got soaked a minute ago. <laughs> so, so the first thing I gotta do is dry it off because I soaked it accidentally okay so this is this particular machine is the big kick and 
and um, it is now the big shot, I believe. Okay, the die that I'm using to cut the hearts is this one. It's called, it's this from Sizzix. It's the FABI brand, Fabi. I'm guessing Fabi, Fabi. I don't know. At first, I thought it was short for fabric. I don't know what it actually stands for. And um, it is, I found it in the fabric department. And so that is what this one is. I believe that there's also another one that is just without, it's not packaged under that brand. It's Sizzix, but it's not packaged under that brand. So it has three hearts. So there's one, it's a big one. Then I'll, it's the mama bear, papa bear, and baby bear. So I'm going to put that on my plate and then I have several pieces of stuff here. And so this is an old quilt that was rotting away. You can see parts of it here which I've rotted away and the stuffing is even gone out of it, the batting. And so I'm going to use that. Uh, this was a quilt that was rescued from the bottom of a dog crate. It was not my dog crate but a veterinarian's veterinarian's wife gave it to me because she thought I would do something with it. She was right, because I have. All right, so I'm going to run this through the die cutting machine to cut my hearts. So I'm just going to cut several layer of layers of hearts and then we'll decide how we want to layer them up. And then you end up with scraps like this. But it cuts right through it and you end up with some great little hearts. And here's one that's left from one of the other cutting uh, experiments. And so I'm going to put, this is felt, make sure that I try to cover all the hearts here. So I'm just going to run these through and get some different colors of the layers and the different shapes and sizes. So this is, this is wool felt. It's wool and acrylic. And then I'm going to put a piece of black. I find that black is really nice for setting things off, so I often include black in what I do. Yeah, it's a nice dye. So there are some little black hearts, which black hearts don't sound good, except when you layer them up, it really helps to set them off. And then these are some pieces of wool that have been shrunk pre-shrunk. Um, I bought them in a package and haven't been using them and I thought I'm going to just see how they work. So I'm pulling those out and they worked fine but these have some thickness to them. So those will be fun to play with. So I believe in having choices, you know what I mean? I just believe in having choices and so that's what I'm doing. I will not be using all these today by any means, but I like to have, in anything I do, I find that I like having multiples. So if I'm going to make, do a bunch of papers, you know, painty papers, I do a bunch. If I'm going to do things like this, I do a bunch of hearts. I just do lots of whatever it is I'm doing because I find that that is, works for me in the way that I like to create. So I'm going to put the big shot, big kick aside. And I personally, I know people laugh at this, but I personally store these 
for the most part back in their boxes because then when I'm going to show some people what it's called, um, and by the way, there is, I don't know that my camera is going to focus in on that. Hello, there we go. Um, that way, when I'm going to go through and with a class and tell people exactly what something is, I have the information still with it. So if I weren't doing as many classes and all of that, then that probably would be a different story. I probably would not keep them in the plastic. Goth hearts, yeah. <laughs> the black ones. <laughs> yeah, the felt did a great job. Okay, so then, you know, I just kind of put things together here and just kind of lay out what I have and then just start playing and see what I like. So the original one that I did, and let's see, where did it go? Here it is. The original one I did, I did three layers, okay? And the three layers I like, and so that's what I'm going to do here. So maybe we'll start, we'll see about building on this deep red, um, maybe the deep red, and then maybe this lighter purple, and then maybe this one like that. That would be kind of fun. And then maybe we'll explore this one, or the, let's do this one. And then what about a layer of black in the middle? And then maybe a layer of this light purple on the top. So that would be an option. And then maybe we have this one and the dark purple. And then this maroon color on the top of this one just for I know there's not much contrast you can't see that very well but you get the idea where you just play with them play with the colors see what they look like you know they don't have to be different colors they can be the same colors top and bottom just kind of play okay so we have those that I just cut out just now and then I have these that I did earlier like so. So I have these as well. And then I kind of go through and see what little embellishment kind of thing I want to use. And so I have, these are some porcelain buttons that I had and that someone painted for me a long time ago. So I thought, you know, that one might work well there. Um, it might work well here as well. Just sort of depends on where you want it to, how much do you want it to show off. And then I had these little heart charms. Which says, this says love on it. It has a heart cut out. So that's kind of fun to do. Um, what else? Oh, thanks. Candida says she likes the the stitched hearts. So then I have a little button that could go on one of them. It depends on how much you want it to show up as to where you put it. That looks kind of cool there. Here's another one of the porcelain buttons, the hand painted porcelain buttons. And I just kind of, you know, look around till I find where I want them to go. And then I have other heart charms and dragonflies and spiral charms. I have a little bitty kitty face on here, this little kitty face charm. I've been trying to use this on something. I haven't found anything yet. Um, here's one that's good. We might have to use this one. This one is a charm. It's a pewter charm that says laugh often. That's a good reminder. And maybe, 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 We'll use this one. It's another one of those little pewter charms. And this one says believe. And so maybe we'll put that on there. Just, you know, just to have it. Because it's just fun to have the uh, different ones. Okay, so that gives us, that gives me 
kind of some place to begin. You know, I've got kind of a foundation. I can change my mind at any point in time, but that kind of gives me a foundation. So we're going to go through and complete one of them. And let's see which one shows up the best. Maybe we'll do this one. We'll set these guys up. Let them wait. And so I'm going to show you what I did to finish these. I have a couple of different things. <coughs> this is called pearl cotton. <coughs> so this is a pearl cotton. I have several different colors and it's all quite a mess, of course. This one is a variegated red, which is one of my favorites. I'll pull it out. And this is a pearl cotton number eight. The size is number eight. So let's see, what do I want? I'll use that one. And then on the red, I'll use that. On this one, I might use, let's see, what shall we use? I want something that's really gonna show up for you guys. So maybe I'll use this variegated blue for the pink one. And then for the red one back here, maybe we'll just use pink because that will show up. And that's what I'm after, okay? Drink some tea, Barb. Yeah, Barb's gotta drink some tea. All right. Let's use the magic throat coat. Blonde woman stamping Jean says to use this. If I hadn't spilled half of it, it would have been a better idea even. <laughs> it is good. And actually, I do think my throat's doing better. Okay. All right, so we said we we're gonna do pink on the red. I'm gonna put these in order, then the blue one, and then the red one. So what I'm going to use is, I'm going to use a darning needle, and these are sharp points on the darning needle. They have a big eye and a sharp point. Okay, so that's what I'm using. The ones I have are old. And then I'm just going to pull out some pink, a length of pink pearl cotton. You could also do this with embroidery floss. I'd use two or three strands of embroidery floss so it would show up nicely. You could also, if any of you have any of this stuff left, this is called uh, ribbon floss. And ribbon floss, I don't think they even make it anymore, but it was something that we used to use. This is a rayon ribbon floss. I used to use that in my embroidery back in my days with my knitting machine. I could run it through the knitting machine and all different kinds of things. So. Yeah, Victor has a channel too. I forgot about that. All right, I'm just trying to get this knot just big enough that it doesn't pull through the felt. But not so big and nasty that it looks terrible. Okay, I think that'll work. We'll see. We'll know quick enough. Now, you can do all kinds of fancy stitches around this. You could do a buttonhole stitch, blanket stitch, etc. I'm going to switch to the other camera so you can see a little bit better. Move stuff out of the way here. Readjust things just a second. Okay. All right, so here's my little heart shape. And I don't particularly care where I start. I'll just pick a spot and start. And then I'm going to come into the shape about, this is about, oh, a scant quarter of an inch from the edge. And then I'm just going to move over, and you can stitch toward yourself or away from yourself, whichever works for you. And I'm just going to do a whip stitch around the edge. And you can straighten up the stitches, you can let them slant, you can have them be kind of wonky and have them go every which way. 
but I'm just going to whip stitch around the side. You could do buttonhole stitch, you could do a blanket stitch, you could do a cross stitch. Cross stitch would be a little more challenging, but you could do it. Let's see if I can get it any closer. There we go. Okay, so I'm just doing this little whip stitch around the edge. Yeah, I see somebody talking about the recording. The recording is not live immediately after I finish. Um, it takes me a little bit. YouTube has to process it, and then I have to do some stuff as well, and then I make it live. So sometimes it's a matter of 24 hours or thereabouts before it goes live. Not live, but public. So it takes a little while, but it will... I will get it up for you so you can watch the recording. You can also scroll back in real time. That's one of the cool parts, the cool features of um, streaming on YouTube. You can The viewer can actually scroll back. Just drag the scroll bar back. And you can, you know, if you miss something, that's a great way to see if you can you know, figure it out. And if you don't, certainly can't figure it out, just, of course, ask the question because I'm happy to answer. Art Journal Guy. Art Journal Guy, I don't know who you are, but welcome. Introduce yourself. Can add beads? Absolutely. You can do these to, uh, to the nth degree. <laughs> That's what my mom used to say. This heart is, this is a wool felt. This came in a kit years ago. It was a Martha Stewart kit. This particular red was. And um, I think it was for Christmas stockings or something. And, you know, it, I just never did the Christmas stockings. So I had all this beautiful felt and I started using it for other things. In Ukraine, it's 2234. That must be late. <laughs> like, really late. Right, Victor? That is late. I'm not used to the 24-hour clock, so I'm going to guess that is about 1030 here p.m. Oh, Travis. <laughs> Travis is traveling. Travis is traveling incognito. Great to see you. Everybody has different names, you know. That's what's so funny. Okay, so just whipping the edges of these little, of this little heart. Just a whip stitch all the way around. And as the hearts get smaller, of course, they get faster. And sometimes the as you're doing this, the thread becomes kind of tangly. And so if you just hold it up and it will probably unthread the needle and just let it untwist itself and then thread it back and keep going. But these, you know, one of the things you can do with this kind of thing is if you have a variety of dies, you can make your own embellishments. For, because they're flat, you know, you could make, if you just do a single layer, you could do that for scrapbook pages or art journal pages or whatever. So because this is not directly under my nose where I can really see what I'm doing, which I know you guys don't know that it's not under my nose, but it's not. It's off to, it's off to one side, which means that sometimes things come get a little bit wonky let's just say a little wonky we're going with it we're going with it okay so I'm at the end okay so this stitch is going to come down and complete my little circle and I'm going to come to the back so the knot is right here in the back so I'm just going to come to the back and then I'm going to take a little stitch, but I'm trying not to have it show on the front side. So 
So I'm taking a little stitch right there. That way I can bring the thread to the back of the little heart. Okay, so that finishes off my little whip stitching. And then I'm going to take another stitch in the same spot and then I'm going to knot my thread and I don't want that knot to show through on the front side. And then I'm going to clip my little thread. Don't clip it right at the knot, but clip it close to the knot. Okay, so there it is, like so. All right, so we have that one done. So let's move up to the next layer. So the next layer is um, the purple, right? Is that what we did on this one? No. This one. This is the one we're doing. Got myself confused. <laughs> Imagine such a thing. So the next one is the quilted piece. And so for that one, I'm going to use this variegated pearl cotton. Now the variegation won't show up very much on this quilted fabric. It will a little bit, but not a whole lot. And not the thread. And I'm going to do the same thing. So indulge me just a minute as I whip stitch around this little heart. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Now you do need to do this. If you're working with an old quilt like this, you have to be a little careful, but you do need to go around the edge with it, with the thread of some kind, because the layers need to be held together. Um, an old quilt like this, the stitching is coming out. There's very little stitching within this heart, very little. So you got to do something to hold it together. So that's why I'm doing the little stitch around the edge. So is anybody having any questions about anything? Are you guys good to go? Not hard. Anybody can do this. Don't have to have a sewing machine. You didn't even have to have the die. You could cut them by hand. It's just a lot faster. Thanks, Sherry. It's a lot faster if you do them with a die cutting um, machine and the die. But you certainly wouldn't have to do that. Bye, Mindy. Thanks for coming. Good to see you, my friend. And if your thread knots, don't yank on it. Don't pull on it. If you have a knot like this that shows up like that, get a hold of the knot. And usually you can pull it, pull one of the sides of the thread, and then usually you can pull the thread and it will unknot itself. But if you start pulling on it really hard to begin with, you're just going to secure that knot in there forever. Then you're going to have to do it again. Oh, good to go. Oh, I thought you I thought it was got to go. Sorry, Mindy. <laughs> okay, it's when your thread starts getting twisted, um, sometimes it will knot more for you. So hold it up and let the the needle dangle down and it will untwist itself. And then usually you're good for a little bit longer for your stitching. And it will twist up again and then you got it do that again. Let the needle dangle. Now, as I said earlier, you can stitch toward yourself or away from yourself when you're doing this. I just find it easiest. For whatever reason, I can see it better if I'm stitching away from myself. I don't know why that is. There's probably some reason. <laughs> And when you're choosing a needle to stitch 
with a heavy thread like this, you want to make sure that the needle, that your needle that you're using, is big enough that it punches a big enough hole that when the hole is punched in the fabric, that the thread then has an easy time getting through your fabric. If your needle is too small, even if the thread fits through the, you know, you can force it to fit through the eye of the needle, you still um, may not have success because the needle has to be heavy enough to make that hole so the thread can travel through. Oop, we got a really crummy knot this time. Crummy little knot. Okay, pull the knot. Don't pull too hard to begin with. You will hate yourself if you do that. Okay, over here on this edge of this, there is no, there's positively no batting over in here. And so it is wanting to um, curl in on. So you're going to have to sometimes just kind of maneuver the threads and the stitches a little bit to get it to look the way you want. Because I'm working with really old, really rotten fabric here. Uh-oh, and there is Mr. Chance, one of the sponsors who has now determined that he's tired of the sunshine and he's ready to come out and join the world. It's like, too bad, buddy, too bad. It's not time yet. And why do we call them the sponsors? Because they let me stream. Usually. Usually, but not always. There are some of the classes I've done for the website that in the background, occasionally you hear the whining Siamese, and I have to apologize for the whining Siamese who is trying his best to get freedom because he wants to come out and tromp around on the table. Did you hear him, Lynn? Oh, he does have a sweet little voice, doesn't he? <laughs> he does have a sweet little voice. Okay, so if you get something that you need to trim up, don't hesitate to do that. So here's our little heart here. A little wonky, again, because um, this fabric is so cruddy. So when you take the stitch on the back, you want to turn it over and make sure the needle is not coming through to the front. So start out with one stitch so that you complete all of your little stitching, whip stitching around the front. And then you want to take another little stitch and do your knot to knot off your thread. And then cut it, and don't cut it too close to the knot. Close enough, but not too close. It's a Goldilocks moment. It's a Goldilocks moment. The sponsors make it possible. Indeed, they do. Okay, so there's layer one and layer two. All right. And as I said, you can kind of play around with the stitches a little bit you know, kind of adjust the threads and so forth and get them the way you want them, but we're going to say that is good. All right, one more round of thread, and so for this one I'm going to use this pretty variegated red. You can tell how much I like this because that's all there is left on it. <laughs> I do love pearl cotton. I use it a lot. It does make it look more handmade, that is for sure. Yeah, he's really tuning up in there. He says, I'm done. I'm done. I don't want to be in here now. Yes, he is. Okay, so we're going to do this little black heart, and we're going to put the red thread around it. Oops, and that's what happens if you don't have a big enough knot. It pulls right through. Yeah, he's in there complaining up a storm. Hey, Cindy. All right, try again. See if I got enough of a knot this time. This is also wool felt. 
Um, I think I ordered this, I believe I ordered this felt from Joggles. Oh, sorry. My apologies. I had it in the wrong spot where you couldn't even see it. I think I ordered this from Joggles. Joggles is a great site. Um, you guys might want to check it out. They have lots of mixed media materials and art supplies of all different kinds. The service, my, my experience with them, the service is very good and they're pretty fast. So I don't know if they ship internationally. I don't have any experience with that. Yeah, Zandra has a YouTube channel and she streams also, trying to catch people as I think about them. Yeah, la lace trapped between the hearts will look great. Absolutely, that's a great idea, Candida. Now, I know that you're not seeing this a whole lot um, because the red is so dark in this section of the thread. It's variegated and it's not catching the color in this particular section of the red thread very well. But in real life, as we say, it does show up a lot better than it's showing up on the camera. There's something kind of meditative about doing hand stitching. So if you, um, and this is easy. You know, you could do the same thing with circles. I have a couple, several different circle dies. And you could do the same thing with the circles. You know, stitch around the edge and make your own embellishments for things. I think they would look great. Circles would be look great turned into a flower or layered up and um, just turned into an abstract pin. I think that would be great as well. <laughs> you haven't heard of Joggles? Travis, where have you been? Where have you been? Okay, we're going to call this done. So let me come to the back and not off. Yeah, be good for hair bands too. Eileen, I think you have you have little girls in your life, don't you? Or a little girl? See, I never think of things like that because I don't have little girls. My littlest girl is my granddaughter and she's almost 24. So I don't even think of that anymore. Okay, so um, here is the little heart in black. Alright, so then we're going to put this on here like so. Okay, so it's looking a little dark, but we're going to brighten it up by putting this uh, button on it. I know you can't see the red around on that black, but it is there. Hi, Tanya. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stitch this little um, heart button. This is a porcelain button. Years ago I had a um, oh sorry Cindy I just saw your question. Did I use a steel or a regular thin die? No this was one of the Biggs dies. It was the the link is in the description box below the video. Whoops. Sorry hang on a second. There we go. <coughs> Um, it's a Biggs die. It's a Sizzix Biggs die. Okay. Just as soon as I find the hole. You know, the hardest part of sewing on a button is finding the first hole, you know? Especially when you're doing it at an angle away from your body. <laughs> I'm telling you, I need this stuff right under my nose. Okay, give me a minute. I got to find the 
There we go. Got it. Oops, can't use this needle. Duh. Can't use that needle. Well, I don't know what I'm thinking. So I'm going to put these little needles back and go to my regular needles, which I happen to have the foresight to bring in here with me. Yeah, of course. That's why they're in here. And I'm going to use black thread because that's the only thread I brought in here with me to stitch the button on. So as I started to say, um, these buttons were handmade. They're porcelain. They're handmade by a friend of mine back when I used to have a store, um, a retail store, where I sold, sold knitting machines, uh, European knitting machines, yarn, and books, and classes. All right, take two on sewing the button on. Okay, seriously, this cannot be this hard to find the button hole. I know you can't see anything. I'm looking for the button hole. Found it. Hey, Sandy Jones. How you doing, my friend? And so when we had the um, the store, the knitting, knitting machine store, I carried pewter buttons and you know different kinds of novelty buttons because people loved those. And then I know I found the woman who made these bought a, a knitting machine from me. And so I asked her if she, I found out that she made porcelain dolls. She did lovely, lovely porcelain dolls. And so I asked her if she ever did porcelain buttons and she said no, but she would be glad to. And so she did. So she made all kinds of porcelain buttons for me and I still have many of them. And so I'm gradually using them up on my mixed media things. But she made lovely buttons. Okay, so let's go back over here. And so we have the components of our little heart all completed, right? Like so. Now, before I can go any further, I need to stitch a bar pin to the back. If you want to turn this into a pin, you got to stitch that on now. So I have a whole box of jewelry finding things and I'm just going to use this one. And because it's very difficult if you try to put this little if you try to assemble this little heart thing, it is much it's really hard to get that to work if you uh if you assemble the heart first and then try to stitch on that pin, it's tough, tough sled in there. So I'm going to quickly stitch this on. Now, if you are doing this as a pin that someone, you know, that you're going to give to somebody and you think that they might actually wear it, which I think most people would that I would give it to like I wouldn't give a pink heart to uh, my husband to wear but you know or to race man hot son as he is known by some but if you're gonna give it to somebody to wear what the way that I like to stitch on a bar pin is I open it up Let's see if I can show this to you I open it up and where the little hook part, the little groove is up. Can you see that little groove, that little part right there? That's the catch for where the pin goes in. I like to put that up so that if it happens to come undone, uh, usually the pin doesn't fall out. But if you have it this way and you have it with the hook going down, sometimes if the pin works itself loose, it can actually come out of your garment. So. 
or wet. I hope that is clear. It might be clear as mud, but I hope it's clear. All right, so once again, I find out where that little thing is, and then I come in here in the back, and I figure out kind of, I kind of center it on the back of the heart. And we're going to say that that is centered, and this is on the back of the heart. And then I'm going to just stitch a few stitches. Close to one end. So I'll do three or four up and down. I'm using a doubled thread, so it, it actually is putting two threads on every time I take a stitch. Okay, so we've got three stitches. I'm going to come up. I'm going to come over the bar one more time. And I'm going to just kind of run my needle all the way down. This is all going to get covered, but I just want to kind of catch the, the thread a little bit. So this is all going to disappear if anything shows on the right side. And so I'm going to just kind of run, do a little running stitch on down. to the other end of the bar pin. And then I'm going to stitch the other end in place. Like so. And you want to do this as neatly as you can, which when you're not doing it live stream, you can do it much neater than I'm sure I will do it here. And that's going to be the end of that. I'm going to run the needle to the other side because this is all going to get covered up. And then I'm just going to take a stitch and knot it off. like so. And if I'm not sure that I got a good knot, I do a second one. And that is that. Cut your thread. And then I go ahead and close the pin back. So it's all closed up. So I have my little pin already in place. And now I'm going to glue my pieces together. And for that, I'm just going to use tacky glue. You could use a fabric glue if you wanted. I just like the tacky glue for most things. I, I have Fabri-Tac sometimes. I don't happen to have any at the moment. And um, so I, you could certainly use Fabri-Tac as well. So I don't get real close to those outer stitches. I want a little dimension left, and so I'm just adding some glue. Turn it over. Try to make sure you don't have glue on your fingers that you are going to get places that you don't want it to be. And just pat it in place. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other one. Okay, so I have plenty of glue. I'm going to put it on here, position it the way that I want it, make sure I don't have any glue on my fingers, and then kind of smash it in place. Okay, and there is this little heart. Easy. Easy. It's all done. 
Now, if you go back to one of our little cards that we jelly plate printed, so we're gonna come back to one of these, and I'm gonna use some black ink, some black um, archival ink, so I'm just gonna set this aside and let it dry a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and ink the edges of this. You could use whatever color you want. I'm just gonna use black archival, and I'm gonna ink around the edges. You could come in here with a pen or uh, a felt tip marker, probably not felt tip, probably a ballpoint of some kind. And you could do some doodling within the jelly plate designs and so forth. You could do all kinds of things to you know, make it even more unique and special. I'm gonna do the back side as well. Thanks, Victor. Well, you know, it's a it's kind of a fun little way to use up scraps because like I said, you wouldn't have to have a die cutting machine. You could cut them yourself easily. It's just there it's just faster with the die cutting machine. Uh, it's faster and they're exactly the same thing every time, same shape. But it's not like you would have to have that. And so you can just use up little scraps and like I think it was Candida suggested putting lace in them, which would be fine. I think that would be a great idea. You could add beads like somebody else suggested. So I just put a little ink around it just to kind of um, give it a little, a little more of a finished look. So I'm going to do the same thing to the other one. Oh, Eileen, since you're here, I'm going to ask you, where did your, um, the line that you use all the time, craft like a duck, where did that come from? I haven't watched you for, for a really long time, and so I haven't ever heard where that expression came from. I know you use it all the time, but I don't know where it came from. I'd like to know the backstory, so you don't have to put it in the chat unless you want to, but if you tell it on your one of your videos one time, that would be great for somebody like me who doesn't, is not familiar with that. But I'm always curious when people use the same um, or similar closing line or whatever, I'm always curious what the story is about where that came from. Shannon Greens, it's, it's very obvious. She always says, the end. <laughs> When I first started watching her, she was talking about the awkward ending. I can so relate to that. <laughs> okay, so we've got ink around the edges. Okay. And now we're going to decide. I do too. I love the hands. So now we're going to decide which one of these we're going to put it on. So it can go on this one. Sorry, you couldn't even see that. Too much crud in my way. I'm going to let you guys vote. So, do you want it on the one on the right? Or do you want it on the one on the left? So, I'm going to let you guys decide. Okay, Eileen says she'll tell it. <laughs> so, there's the left or the right. So, I'm going to let you guys vote. I'm going to take a sip of tea while you're voting. And then I'm going to do what you tell me to do. And these are just little jelly plate printed cards that I did earlier. Kia says left, CB says right, so we have two lefts and a right. Janet says either one, <laughs> left, right. Oh, you guys are splitting it down the middle. One, two, three, four for left, and one, two, three, four. It's four to four. Now it's five to four. Six to four. Okay, it's gonna go on this one. Okay, stop voting. <laughs> Eileen likes the bigger hands with the heart. Okay. All right, so we're gonna put it on this one. All right, so the next thing you gotta do is you got to punch, punch the holes in the card. <laughs> Victor says, put it in the middle. <laughs> now we have to get holes in the card. Hopefully you can see there's two little holes right there in order to get the pin in. Okay? 
<laughs> Janet says, either one, as long as you mail it to her. <laughs> okay, so you've got to be able to punch this in the middle of the card, okay? It, because we're going to try to center it. Now, there's no guarantee, people. There's no guarantee that this is going to be perfect. I'm just telling you right now. But we're going to try it. So if you have a hole punch that is a long enough hole punch um, to be able to get it into, you know, it has to be a long reach, uh, you're good to go. I didn't have one that was long enough for this, and so I'm going to be using one of these screw punches. This is the Martha Stewart screw punch because you can do it in the middle of the page. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to get it kind of centered in here. Okay, then I'm going to hold it up, and I'm going to attempt, because my bar pin's not on here real straight. I'm going to attempt to give myself a couple of holes, markings for the holes. Yeah, my pin is not on there real straight, so my holes are not going to be real straight. So I'm going to come in here, and if this doesn't work, we're going to say, oh, we wish it did. Okay, so I'm going to punch the hole punch the hole so we got two holes right there in our little card now and then open up the pin like so and put it through and then you're going to kind of have to bend the card to get the rest of the pin to come through Okay, so I have to bend the pin or bend the card back so I can get the rest of the pin to come through. And then I'm going to have to put the pin into its little holder and then clip it shut. All right. And then there it is. Okay, so then it fits on its little card. So if you did not want to use it, give it as a pin, right? You didn't want it to be a pin as such. Then, of course, you don't have to add the pin back. You could just glue the embellishment to the front of the card. Or, you know, if you wanted to make it a removable embellishment, you could um, somehow, I don't, can't think right now, but you could also attach it in some temporary manner. Like you could stitch it. That's what you could do. You could stitch it. Um, to the to the card so that you could just clip the stitching and pull it off so that's what you could do that way it would be usable by the person that you sent it to so there's the front there's the back of the card for that one uh, yeah Eileen said you could use a magnet too absolutely okay so I'm gonna hold that shut then I'm gonna put this one back on that I did earlier so let me put it on as well so you can see both of them. And you do have to bend the card back a little bit so that you can kind of maneuver everything, you know, get it in the right spot. And maneuver the little closure on the pin. Okay, come on. Don't be, sometimes things are just not cooperative, you know what I mean? But if you persist, uh-huh, you win. Okay, so here are the two that, that I did. This one I did before, and this is the one we just did just now. In case you don't know how these screw punches work, the they store the little... <coughs> They store the little sizes of the punches. There's three different sizes. <coughs> Pardon me. They store in the handle. And so you just unscrew the little collar down here. So you undo that. And then you just pull out the, um, the die part, the part that does the hole punch. Just pull that out and you can store the whole thing. All of them will store in the handle. And then it comes in this little plastic pouch, which I usually keep it in because that I don't want this to get banged into the container where I'm storing it. Okay? 
So here are the other ones that we kind of, I put together earlier just so you can see, you know, some other options. And of course, you don't have to put the charm in the middle or the thing in the middle. You could put it over to one side. <coughs> Pardon me. So you could put it over to one side, which would be kind of cute on this one especially. These that are charms, these are heavy. And so they're going to hang down no matter what. So you can't put them at an angle. They're going to hang down. So you have to keep that in mind when you place that. Um, and, you know, you just play with it. Anyway, there you go. There you go. Happy Valentine's Day, people. Happy Valentine's Day. <clears throat> Dee Dee Sue. Thank you. Yeah, the punch is great. It's a great punch. It's a Martha Stewart punch. Thanks, guys. Um, as I said, anybody that, um, if you're curious about any more of the stuff that I used, I think I got all of the products linked down at the bottom. Just if you want to click on them, you can see what they are, what they're about. It just might give you more information. So, yeah. All right, I guess it's time to bring out the you-know-whos. Yes, I guess it's time. I guess it's that time of day. Shall we bring them out? I'll let you guys vote. Do you want the Do you want the sponsors to come out, or do you are you sick of seeing the sponsors? <laughs> I bet I know the answer. Oh, good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Bye, Deborah. Yeah, if you want to see the sponsors, you're going to have to vote. Oh, Eileen says, yep. <laughs> I guess that means I have to get them. <laughs> I guess it means I have to get them. <sighs> Lynn's staying. Lynn's not going anywhere. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, CB. <laughs> oh, you guys are cracking me up. All right. Watch out. Here they come. I don't know if you saw me flip the door stop up at the top of the door, but I have to flip that. We have to put door stops on all the doors because if we don't, someone whose name is <coughs> Chance, <laughs> also known by a few other names sometimes, he goes around and slams the doors shut. Come on. Come here. They want to say, see your ugly mug. Come here. Are you coming? Oh, you goofball. Come here. These cats are so big. I'm just telling you. I know I say that every week, but they are. It's huge. It's huge, I tell you. Huge. Yep. There he is. In living color, everybody. There he is. Aren't you? This is Chance. He does. He goes around and he slams the doors. Um, you did, Victor. You did make it all the way to the end of the broadcast. Thank you for being here. Great to have you. Yeah, this is Mr. Chance. He's the one that slams doors. So we had to, my husband had to engineer door stops for every door because he will, when he wants my attention and I'm not giving it to him, he goes around, he gets behind. I mean, I've watched him do it. He gets behind the door, he climbs up with his front feet, and then he walks on his hind feet until he can slam the door shut. Charlie, are you coming? Let me show you Charlie. Charlie just made it that far. He just couldn't come another step. He just couldn't come one more step. Nope, he could not. He made it that far. Are you coming over here, Charlie? No, apparently not. Yeah, he only could make it that far. He's sorry. 
kitties do interesting things. Let me tell you, this one, this one right here, this dingling does goofy things. He um, he does play fetch, and so we play fetch about every night. He is he is a crack. He cracks me up. He absolutely cracks me up. He is the funniest cat. I've never seen another cat. I've lived with lots of cats, but I've never lived with another one like this one, ever. He's a mess, this one. Yeah, Charlie's just all stretched out on the floor. He just can't make it. He just cannot make it. He's laying over there going, <laughs> He is a mess. And I started doing this to him because he was irritating the life out of me. So I started doing this to him. So he shakes his head and comes back for more. That's all he does. He shakes his head and then back he comes because he loves his ear massage. Don't you? You're a goof. Anyway, okay. So um, that's us. That's all for now. <laughs> we will see you back here next week. Uh, for some other project, I have no idea what it is yet. If you have suggestions and you'd like to comment in the comments below the video, things you'd like to see, that would be great. And I will see you next week, everybody. Hope you have an excellent weekend. And I'll see you then. So, <laughs> so thanks for hanging out with me and spending some time here at my channel. And if you want more information about classes and so forth, just check out howtogetcreative.com. And I will see you next time. Bye, guys.